Hello, this is Mike with the NetPix Options Academy. This is the midweek recap for a Wednesday, November 11. So what a difference a week makes. I mean, going back into last week, we saw a very active market on the upside. Um, and really, we could extend that back over the past six weeks. It's just been a pretty impressive run overall um, in the, the big picture with SPY and QQQ and DIA, but also on some of the individual names, names like Amazon. I mean, we haven't seen a downtick in Amazon in weeks. I mean, pretty impressive stuff. We then came into this week, and it's kind of been a dud of a week so far. Uh, market just feels very, very tired. The volumes have been very low. Um, now, of course, the banks were closed on Wednesday for Veterans Day. So when you see that type of event, um, you can that oftentimes leads to lower volume. That's exactly what we saw. So this week, we've tried to get some selling pressure. Unfortunately, with the low volumes um, and everybody right back into the, the buy the dip mode, they're buying every single dip right now. So it's difficult to get anything going on the downside. If we're going to get some selling pressure with some follow through, what we need is we need volume to pick up. We need some volatility to come back into this market. We need the VIX to pop. Right now, there's no fear. Everybody's just assuming that every dip is going to be bought. So what I'm looking for here the rest of the week, you know, if we can get some of the support levels, which I'll talk about next, if we can get some of those levels to break on an increase in volume, you know, I definitely think we could see a nice quick pop to the, to the downside. I think that would be entirely healthy for this market. Okay, I'm not expecting a collapse or a crash here by any means, but a healthy few percentage point pullback here would just it would make it a lot easier to play the next leg to the upside. Right now, if we start to head higher from here, we're left chasing on a lot of charts because names like Amazon and Google, I mean, we've barely seen a pullback there. SPY, I mean, we've barely seen a pullback off of the highs. In the grand scheme of things, on SPY, we're only a few percentage points off the all-time highs. Okay, so it doesn't mean the market can't head higher from here. It just means, you know, it's going to be more work for the bulls. I mean, the, the, the volume dipping like it has so, uh, so far this week, it feels like the bulls are kind of running out of some ammo here. Okay, now we have some catalysts here to end the week. Uh, Thursday is filled with Fed speakers from start to finish. Okay, we've got some big economic numbers out um, between now and the end of the week. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, it definitely feels like, you know, if, if any of these Fed speakers even hint at an interest rate um, raise here coming up in December, you know, I definitely think that could be a catalyst to give us a nice healthy pullback. So um, what are some levels that I'm looking at here on SPY on the daily chart? We've got this cluster of moving averages that are acting as support here this week. That dash red line, that is the 200 period simple moving average. Those two green lines are the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages. So we've got three moving averages right on top of each other, right down around the 207, 20650 range. You know, that's going to be a pretty strong area of support. If those levels break and we get volume to pick up, you know, I definitely think we could see a quick wave to the downside. So I'll be watching that closely. Um, at this point, if we head back to the upside, we've got the swing high from last week at 211.85. And then ultimately, let me get my data box out of the way, you can see the high of the year back at 213.78. So should we decide to head higher? Should we get that Santa Claus rally here coming up that everybody's you know looking for? Those could be some levels on the upside to look at. But before we test those, I would love to see a couple days of selling. That would be great. Um, the Dow, very similar looking chart to the S&P. I mean, they're very much in sync with each other. So everything I just said on the S&P holds true on the Dow. And we've got that cluster of moving averages right below us, right around 175.50 to 176. You know, those are going to be some areas to watch for support. See if we bounce off of those levels. What concerns me here um, with any of these levels, because the volume is so low, I would expect them to hold initially. In order for us to break this cluster here, I definitely want to see the volume down here spike. We're seeing the complete opposite. I mean, the volume just dropped off a cliff. Um, why do I always talk about volume? When volume's into the market, you know, it's very, very easy to break some of those support and resistance levels. Not to mention, when we go over to the individual names, when you're trying to take trades in live market conditions, okay, when there's low volume, it's just difficult to get good prices, especially on the options side of things. Okay, we compared this week's price action to what we've seen over the past couple of months. I mean, there's definitely been days where the volume's through the roof. It just makes it so much easier to get in and out of trades at good prices. Right now, I'm not going to say chasing is the right term, but I've had to adjust my prices on my trades to try to get fills. And that's not a good position to be in long term because anytime you start to adjust prices, anytime you have to pay up by a nickel or a dime, 
doesn't seem like a lot in the, at the moment. When you start to add that up over hundreds of trades over time, that definitely can add up to a big number at the end of the year. So we just we want to be cautious here. I would just we really need some volume uh, to come back into this market along with a pickup in volatility. So QQQ. Um, we've got the 20 period exponential and simple, simple moving averages right below us, right around the 112.50 to 112 area. Those are the areas of support that I'll be watching um, there. Uh, we just established a new high last week at 115.47. So that again becomes an area of resistance should we move back up to that level. All depends on what the Fed says here. I mean, we've got, like I said, we've got probably got five or six Fed speakers on tap for Thursday. So we'll see uh, what they give, give us here for direction going forward. Uh, if we take a look at the VIX, even though it looks like we've seen, I mean, you can see a number of red candles here over the past week. Here's the problem. Okay, look at that VIX. It's only at 16. For most of the last number of sessions, we've been in the 13, 14 range. Okay, that that's just a very low level. That's just showing a lot of complacency in this market. There's not a lot of people expecting a move to the downside. So what do we know long term? Whenever we get into that position where the boat is loaded on one side, you know, the market likes to make as many people pay and feel pain as possible. So this is the time where you know, it would not surprise me um, if we got to move to the downside. Does that mean I'm jumping in to play a move lower? No, of course we're waiting for a confirmation in price. But we're just the important part about painting this big picture, I need to form an opinion on what I think the market's going to do because that's going to help with um, what type of position size I put on, how aggressive I get with my strategies. Do I just want to buy long calls, long puts? Do I want to sell some premium? Do I want to trade vertical spreads? Um, by kind of putting some context around the overall market, it really helps me with how aggressive or conservative I want to be. Right now, I want to be a little more conservative on the upside because we're so overdone. Um, I'd be more than willing to get more aggressive on the downside. Okay, so before we take a look at the charts, a number of weeks back, um, I recorded a video talking about the trade of the week. And it was on symbol OIH. This is an oil, um, oil services ETF. The whole premise behind this trade was to take advantage of the high volatility. Okay, we walked through how to look at that. We took a look at the IV percentile. It was above 50. Um, we were at a point where the options were pricey. They were rich. So we decided to sell some premium, but we took the opinion that OIH might get a little choppy because we've seen big moves um, both down and up in many of the oil products. We expected a period of consolidation. So we went into the November options. Again, this was a number of weeks ago. Okay, I believe we put this trade on with 32, 33 days left expiration, and now we're down to eight days. So I want to give a quick update on this because now we're kind of at a make it or break it zone here as well. We need to decide what we're going to do. Are we going to hold on to this trade a little bit longer? Do we want to exit it? Um, so let's take a look. So the trade that we put on in the November monthlies, we actually sold an iron condor, and we sold a 32, let me get these strikes in here, 32, 33 call spread. And we sold the 29, 28 put spread. So let me switch these strikes around, get that loaded up. And we put this trade on, we sold it for 54 cents. It's now trading for 23 cents. So we're right around that 50% max profit level. Okay, so it's entirely possible that you want to close this trade out. If you want to book the profit, I completely understand. Okay, I ideally like to be closer to 75% of max profit on my iron condor, so I want to hold on a little bit longer, but here's the risk. Okay, there's only eight days left to expiration, so the prices of the options from here on out are going to become very active. They're going to respond very quickly to changes in price. Okay, that could work in my benefit. That could help me reach 75% of max profit very quickly, but it also could lead towards to me giving up all of my profit here very quickly as well. Okay, typically the crude oil inventory reports out on Wednesday at 10:30, because of the holiday, because of the Veterans Day holiday, um, it's out t on Thursday at 11 o'clock. So we've got to be aware of that report. I mean, that could that's pretty risky. So if you wanted to close this out, I don't I don't argue with you at all. I'm going to hold on a, uh, a scotch longer. I'm going to hold on um, probably till Friday, and then I'll probably you know make a decision whether I want to you know hold it into expiration week or just exit the trade. So. Um, Right now, it's, it's, it's been a nice trade. It's done exactly what we needed to do. The only thing that, I, you know, if I'm going to be nitpicky, okay, the only thing I wish would have happened 
was volatility. If we could have seen a little bit more of a contraction in volatility, that would have been perfect, but uh, we just haven't seen that happen yet. So all things considered, we're still working out well here. We're in a profitable trade, but uh, just want to hold on a little bit longer there. Okay, um, let's take a look at some of the other individual charts. Um, we haven't taken a look at our reversal chart all that much. Um, because we've been in such a one-way market for the past six weeks. I mean, we've been in such a strong move to the upside. Um, so now we're starting to get into a stretch where some of these charts look very attractive to me because we're at very overbought levels. We're starting to see the market roll over slowly. Um, so we've had some nice action here. Let's take a look at Tesla. I'm a big fan of Elon Musk, but I just I don't have a preference here whether it goes up or down. I just want an active market. So you can see here on Tesla, the last two trades, full winner on the upside here on the long trade, full winner on the downside with this quick move lower. Okay, so what to happen there is we got to an overbought extreme on Williams percent R. We got a close below our signal line. The trade triggered in. We we went in and we bought. Um, we put on a position out in the November, uh, the November puts worked out really, really well for us. Um, we put on a an extra just a long put out in November and uh, had about a 30% return very, very quickly. So just a nice trade there um, on Tesla. Actually, I'm checking my numbers here. No, that's, I was looking at the wrong numbers. It was actually a 100% return on the long put. So just a really great trade on the downside, and now we're flat. The reason I show you this chart, this is the type of action that I'm expecting on many other names out there. If I go over to the Dow, for example, we're very overbought. We've given an attempt on the downside. The first attempt got taken out at break even. Now we have another short setting up. This is the type of chart pattern, you know, like we just looked at it on Tesla. I could expect, you know, maybe a quick pullback, a two, three day pullback where we get a quick pop to the downside. So I will definitely look to play that. We now have a new short setting up heading into Thursday at 176.77. Definitely a valid trade. Definitely something that I'm interested in. Should we trigger into that on Thursday? That would put our targets at 175.57 and 174.05, the stop at 179.17. I would be interested in some long December puts at this point. You know, I just really don't want to mess with expiration week next week with the November options. You know, the market's been a little slow here this week. I'm just going to go out farther in time. So I would go out to the December puts. Um, why am I not selling premium here? The volatility is just too low. The options are too cheap. I'd rather just stay on the buy side at this point. Uh, if we take a look at Apple... You know, some of these big market leaders, I mean, we're talking about Tesla. Here's Apple. I mean, some of these names have pulled back. So that we're starting to see some weakness creep into this market in some areas. So here's Apple. We triggered into the short trade, saw the quick pop to the downside. Now we just, we have a whole host of other names that are looking at very similar patterns, like the Dow, for example, um, Amazon, Google. I mean, we could expect that these types of breakdowns, I would expect over the next couple of days um, or even into next week. So um, they've been some great trades here on Apple and, and Tesla. Um, now we're expecting you know, some of these other names on our list to, to join the party on the, on the downside. Um, some of the financials here, Citigroup had a nice run to the upside on Citigroup. And now we just triggered into a short trade yesterday. Now we have targets down at 54.23 and 53.42, stop at 56.82. So um, I definitely like to look at the financials because a lot of times those financials lead the market in both directions. So if some of these financials give it up, I think the rest of the market could follow suit. So, you know, again, I'm looking at December long puts here. I'm not messing with the Novembers at this at this point. There's just not enough time left. What I don't want to have happen is the market just kind of sit sideways heading into next week and then have all that time decay from expiration week add up. You know, that would be difficult to overcome. So I'm just going to play it a little bit safer and go out to the December monthly options. Not to mention, you know, I want to make sure I'm trading liquid products. Okay, why couldn't I go out to some of the weekly expiration cycles to play some of those options, especially in a period of low volatility um, where the volumes have been light? I just don't find a lot of good liquidity in the weekly. So I'm going to go out to the December monthlies. Okay, so that is Citigroup. Um, let's go back over to our basic chart. Uh, let me pop those up here a quick second. 
we initiated a short trade on SPY back on Monday of this week. It's kind of been just a chop, a chop fest ever since. I still like the trade. We're still in it. We're starting to head back into a small profit here. Um, and this is the type of pattern. Once I get the chart up, you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, this is oftentimes what will happen when you get into trades near a market top or near a market um, turning point. We get into this trade on SPY. It, it triggered in right here. Okay, it triggered in at 207.40. So we put on a December put. Okay, I believe I'm in the December 210 put. I am just trying to confirm the strike price. Um, so we put the trade on and it's been straight sideways ever since. I mean, we've basically been underwater the whole time. So the key here is to trust the system because we know when the market's been this strong for so long, for so many weeks in a row, you're not just going to get things to turn on a dime. Buy the dip has worked for the last number of years. You're not going to get that to change immediately. So um, did we get in a little bit early here? Maybe. Okay, but I still really like this trade. We just have to be patient and let things play out. The important part about swing trading, in my opinion, since I've put this trade on on Monday, Okay, we're now heading into a Thursday session. I've basically looked at this trade for maybe 10 minutes since I put the trade on. It's important to put these trades on and let them work. Okay, don't sit there and watch the markets from opening to closing bell because then once you start to pull back like we did here over the, um, the last couple of days, you're underwater, you're starting to panic. You're starting to, you know, your mind is starting to play games with yourself and you're probably starting to think, well, maybe I should just get out of this trade and maybe it's not ready to move lower. Let the trade work. Okay, we already know where our stop and targets are at. Okay, get some conditional orders in there at those levels. Maybe get some price alerts in those levels. Let the trade work. Because I still really think there's there's some high odds of success here because we're so overdone on the upside. All we need is a day or two of selling and we're hitting some target levels on SPY. Now, because we went out to December, is this going to be a home run 100% winner? Uh, very low chances of that. Because we went so far out in time, it's a more conservative play. We're probably going to have a smaller winner. I'm fine with that. Given the current conditions, that was the risk that I was comfortable with. Okay, so that's SPY. So far, so good there. We just, uh, just a test of patience so far. Um, I mentioned some of the energy names. We talked about OIH. Um, here's XLE. It's actually been on a nice stretch here um, with the energy ETF. We have this short trade here again. I mean, look what happened. We triggered into this short, got into some December long puts. Immediately, price action bounced back to the upside. We were taking heat, but looked like we might stop out. Here's why it's so important to stay patient. Had we panicked here and said, you know what, we're going to cut risk, we're going to take the trade off, we would have missed out on this move back down to, full tar uh, to first target. First target was just hit yesterday. The stop's going to go down to break even, so we're going to reduce the risk on the trade. The stop's going to go to 68.84. Our full target's down at 66.42. This is why it's so important to know your products as well. Okay, if you get into a trade on XLE for the first time and you're expecting um, a trade to complete in 24 to 48 hours, it just it doesn't happen on XLE. XLE is a slower mover. You have to give XLE time um, to let the trade play out. Oftentimes, my trades on XLE last for a week or more. It's probably one of the slowest names on my list which I actually like because it just doesn't take a lot of attention to detail. I mean, you start to look at names like Tesla or Netflix. I mean, those names can move very, very quickly. They take more attention to detail. So if every name on my list was, was super volatile like that, it would make it tricky for me to get in and out quickly every day. But because I'm able to slow things down on, with some of these names, just so much easier to trade. So we'll see. We got the big um, oil report out on Thursday at 11 o'clock. So we'll see if we can get one more push to the downside here. Uh, worst case, though, we're out at break even. So, you know, good position to be in. Um, let's take a look at TLT. We'll wrap it up with TLT. I know I'm running a little bit long on time. Um, here's TLT, the short trade. Uh, we were in it uh, for about a, well, just under a week. Um, really nice trade to the downside. You know, this is uh, this is one of those trades where, again, are we in and out in 24 hours? No. It took some patience. We had to hold for a week. But here again, we put the trade on and let the trade work. We know where our targets are at. We know where the stop is at. Just be patient. 
let the market do its thing. Now, do I think TLT is overdone on the downside? Yes. If equities start to sell off, could we get a pop in TLT? Sure. Um, I definitely think gold is starting to reach some oversold levels. Gold is one of those markets that I would love to come in and sell some put spreads out in December. Because I definitely think there's a very good chance of gold bouncing higher. Now, why would I sell a put spread instead of just buying a call to play that move? Well, after a big move like that, we may not bounce immediately. We may get choppy and consolidate in here. By selling premium, it would allow me to still profit in a sideways market. So um, the reason I've held back on it, um, the volatility is still a little bit light on GLD. If I take a look at the IV, the IV percentile is just under 40. I'd rather see that closer to 50 before I sell premium. So that's why I've held off to this point, have not sold anything just yet. But it's definitely on my radar. We'll take a little, we'll take a look at it um, over the next couple days, see if we can get some short put spreads on. All right, so I'm going to start to wrap this video up here. Um, again, for the rest of the week, the Fed is front and center on Thursday. Um, well, it just seems like a daily thing now. If you factor in um, central banks worldwide, I mean, we had speakers pretty much every day now just doing their best to prop this market up. So, you know, we could be getting close to the market giving it up a little bit on the downside, and that's what I'm trying to play for over the next uh, the next few days and heading into next week. So let's see if we can get one more active stretch before the end of the year over the next month or so. That would be great. Um, so fingers crossed. We'll see what the market gives us. So I'll wrap this video up here. I'll be back over the weekend to kind of sum things up, see what, we, uh, see what we did to close the week. And uh, as always, if you have any questions at all on anything that I covered, um, feel free to send me an email. Mike at netpix.com is my direct email. All right, so enjoy the rest of the week, everybody, and we'll talk to you over the weekend.